Sarah, and the topic for this week, if you haven't figured out yet, which I'm sure you have because you're all brilliantly smart people, um, is mindfulness. And the uh, the question that Elena and I have kind of sort of gone into exploring is what uh, role does mindfulness have, you know, outside of ourselves? What role does mindfulness have in our interactions with others? Um, I'm a huge fan of mindfulness, by the way, and not not so much in the you know, sit down, breathe in, mind out full, because I think that's absolutely retarded sometimes, but, um, or the sitting by, you know, an imaginary river going, I am calm, or whatever, like, that, that, for me, isn't mindfulness. For me, mindfulness is more along the lines of, I am aware of what my thoughts are, how my thoughts contribute to and interact with my feelings, and how my feelings contribute and interact with my thoughts, and how the two contribute to, interact with, and react to my behavior. And if I can be aware of all of that, then it's just more like the focus that I have is more direct, um, which I think is a good thing, because it saves time and energy, and a lot of grief. <laughs> and then the other thing, too, is that everybody wants to be validated. Everybody wants to know that their point of view is important, that their point of view is valuable, that they have something worthwhile to say, but it's not in our nature as humans to be validating. We're all looking for that ourselves, so we, we don't really give it to each other very often. And I'm sure you've all heard the thing, you can't, like the whole saying about it, you can't give to others what you don't have yourself. Yeah, well it's very hard to find validation outside of yourself if you can't give it to yourself. Um, and validation sought outside of who you are and who and how you think of yourself and your behavior and the way your thoughts and feelings are related to that behavior. Um, it's not it's not really sustainable, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, you can get validation from outside. If you get a good mark, for example, in a class, that can be, um, that's validating in that you, yes, you have achieved something that's quite worthwhile, but if you know inside of yourself that the validation, or if you know inside of yourself that you worked really, really hard, and that, you know, a C is a good achievement for you, um, that goes a lot further than whatever grade the professor gives you, for example. Uh, and if you can satisfy those needs for validation, and if you can satisfy those needs to be heard, and to know that you're important, and that your point of view is important, then you're far, far, like you're in a far better position to take into account another point of view which is where your this interaction with others comes in. If you can take into another point of view after seeing your own as valuable and important, then basically you've mastered empathy. And empathy will get you anywhere that you need to be and everywhere that you need to be when it involves people. Because if you can be empathic and you know, be appreciative of another point of view, people really value that. Um, and it's, you know, in general you resolve things more quickly, there's less confrontation, less conflict, and it's just a lot easier, <laughs> my opinion on the thing. And uh, the other thing too is that if you've had those needs, those needs for validation met, 
by being mindful and by being like, okay, yeah, this makes sense in my head. This is why I'm having this thought. This is why it's not a bad thought. This is why, you know, it's completely natural and a-okay and I'm fine for having that thought. If you can get past that, then you can start to have insight into other people's needs. I'm not suggesting that everybody needs to become a mind reader, but if you know yourself what your needs are, then you can kind of be far more attuned to what um, someone else's needs are, and you can give them that validation that they need. So that, like, every single obstacle in interactions, I am of the opinion that it it's because someone's need isn't being satisfied. And if you can satisfy that need because you have it within yourself to validate yourself and you can validate someone else, then you can move on to a resolution a lot, a lot more quickly. So yeah, that's my whole idea on the thing. Um, for me, being mindful just means being hyper aware of everything around you. And not hyper vigilantly. But just being aware of everything, of you and your environment around you, and just respecting that and being at peace with that, because you get to react in a way that is mindful and you get to react in a way that you don't regret or that is in keeping with your values and your morals. Um, yeah, so basically that's it, is I think that it fosters a lot of empathy, that it allows us to get to a resolution of far more quickly, and it allows us to consider another point of view because we've already gotten to the point where we can validate and consider our own point of view, our own point of view, and we don't have to worry about that, and we can consider another point of view, and just, it's just better. <laughs> I'm a big fan of this stuff, but, um, yeah, not necessarily the all imagery and the breathe in, breathe out, yeah, but the rest of it, I love, I swear by it, um, if you're interested, by the way, in mindfulness, there's a, there's a lot out there that you can read up on. Um, and the person who does most of the work in mindfulness um, and did a lot of work for the DBT, the, like the construction of DBT, is Marshall Linehan. So you can just Google that. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of mindfulness, uh, mindfulness for eating disorders, mindfulness for, you know, social anxiety, there's a whole bunch there. It's really, it's definitely worth looking into. So, have a good week, everybody, and I will see you next Saturday.